Everybody, thank you for attending our conference this evening. I am one of the uh, board members for ABBS, and I am uh, currently at the Bone and Joint Institute at Hartford Healthcare. Uh, and I'm actually going to be presenting on emergency, emerging technologies in baseball um, using force measurements in baseball pitchers. Uh, this was actually some of the last work I did prior to leaving Connecticut Children's, so I do want to give them credit for the use of their center for motion analysis, um, as well as some people that helped with um, this stuff. So I will um, start with a brief introduction. So baseball pitching, as we all know, is an incredibly complex and explosive movement with a majority of the power. Most studies place it between 50 and 60 percent of the power is developed during that initial push off and drive down the the mound. Once the foot, uh, lead foot again hits the mound, we then move off that kinetic chain, transferring the energy that was developed down the pitching mound up through the lower extremities into the core through a series of rotations and then eventually into the pitching arm and then um, it presents itself as the ball velocity. Now, um, pitching biomechanics really started with a focus on the upper extremity, mostly because a lot of the injuries were occurring in the upper extremity, so it made sense that that's where we would start looking. Then more recently, there was a shift to look at the trunk and the core mechanics and how those might influence both ball velocity and upper extremity joint moments. And now we're starting to move towards the lower extremity. There's always been an interest in understanding the push off from the mound and the landing forces that a pitcher experiences when throwing, but the problem was technology really hasn't caught up to us as of yet. Um, right now, a lot of our baseball um, biomechanics is confined to labs or now with markerless motion capture, we're going onto fields, but it's still really hard to move a force plate out of, a out of ground and put it into a pitching mound, let alone bringing it onto a field. Um, one of the earliest uh, measures of force in pitching was done by Elliot et al. in 1988. He was able to create an instrumented pitching rubber so that he could understand push-off power. And in that push-off power, he saw that there was some relationship between um, push-off power and ball velocity. Now, then one of the um, probably earliest full uh, instrumented mounds was done in McWilliams in 1998. There was multiple plates in his mound and he was able to calculate again, push off um, as well as breaking forces on the landing leg. And he found that while push off was important for arm speed, that the breaking forces of the lead leg land was actually probably just as important, if not more important than the initial push off. All right. Then the, there seemed to be very little work done on force plates uh, in between then and the 2010s. And then we find that McNally in 2015, again, instrumented, uh, multi used multiple plates instrumented into a pitching mound and looked at landing forces and correlated those to uh, ball velocity, but found that the push off forces really had nothing to do with ball velocity. And again, the importance was focused on the landing velocities. And then in 2018, Amaya did a very large study with an instrumented pitching rubber and 74 high school pitchers and showed that there was a weak correlation between velocity and push off. Now, all of these studies relied on currently available force plates. And for a long time, that's all that we had available to us. Most recently, um, Newt Force, a company out of Arkansas, has created what's called the Newt Force Censored Pitching Mound. And I was lucky enough to be able to have this come to my lab for um, a week and we were able to play with it and to test about 23 college pitchers. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this mound and then also explain to you about some of the data that we collected. So the mound itself, the very large mound, it's uh, about 10 feet long, five feet wide, uh, standard pitching um, mound per dimensions, it collects data at 200 hertz. Um, and the really cool thing about this mound is that it allows for real-time data collection and analysis but the entire surface of the mound is censored. Uh, you're not confined to trying to get a pitcher to land on a force plate or trying to position the force plates so that you're going to catch a full foot landing. Um, they have managed to instrument the entire top of the mound and, the, uh, and using a series of um, equations, they're able to map the force uh, across um, the mound, both at push off and during the landing 
uh, in three dimensions. Um, so what we were trying to do was just get an understanding of the implications of ground reaction forces on both ball velocity and upper extremity joint moments. Until our study that we were starting to look at um, at Connecticut Children's, we really hadn't looked, no one has really looked at the implications of uh, ground reaction forces when it came to joint moments. Uh, typically, it was always about ball velocity. So we wanted to just see what would happen um, with both the joint moments and ball velocity. So like I said, all the data was collected at Connecticut Children's Medical Center using a 16 segment biomechanical model and a Vicon MX motion capture system that we collected at 250 Hertz. Uh, 23 collegiate players, uh, both from division one and division three schools in the area were kind enough to um, come in and be our test subjects. And uh, each of the pitchers threw seven fastball pitches from the stretch position. And they pitched from the uh, Newt Fort censored mound and uh, we then, um, and they all pitched towards a target that was 60 feet, six inches away. Uh, and we also actually had a baseball catcher um, that one of the teams sent for us uh, that week as well. Um, so collecting all the data, uh, ball velocities was around 78 miles an hour, elbow varus moment and glenohumeral internal rotation moments were similar to what we would have seen in uh, typical studies. But the push-off and landing forces that we were getting off of the mound showed that the push-off force was typically around 167% of the pitcher's body weight, and the landing force is nearly 220% of the uh, pitcher's body weight. Um, and this lower plot down here, um, you can see that the uh, green trace is uh, the Z direction, the uh, red trace the Y direction, and the blue trace the X direction. And um, Randy from the uh, Florida Baseball Institute was kind enough to put this on his website and kind of go through all of the time points that are of importance and to also uh, look to see that Newt Force also does in, uh, output an impulse um, force as well for both acceleration and deceleration portions of the drive down the mount. All right, so what did we find? We found that for every 10 pound increase in push-off power, the joint moments increased, especially at the shoulder, and ball velocity increased slightly about 0.4 miles an hour. Landing forces, interestingly enough, showed an increase again, uh, with an increase in landing forces, there was also an increase in the glenohumeral joint moment, but there was no relationship between the elbow varus moment and the landing force, and ball velocity again was sitting right around uh, 0.4 miles an hour. But what's really uh, interesting and unique to us was that uh, for every 10% increase in the landing force, when you normalize the landing force to the body weight, so you took into account the really large pitchers, the really um, small pitchers that we had in the lab that day, the ball velocity was the only thing that increased. So the greater pre uh, force that pitchers landed with, they were seeing uh, for every 10% increase, a one uh, mile an hour increase in ball velocity with absolutely no relationship to uh, the joint moments, which kind of points to the idea that using these force plates or censored mounds, you really get an understanding of power generation into the system and what that can actually do to both ball velocity and joint moments. And it seems that there's potential that the landing, the landing forces may be um, a means of increasing performance without really increasing injury potential. So the good news is when you looked at the data that was coming off the Newt, uh, Newt Force mound, almost all of the data was consistent with what was previously published in the, art of, in the papers that I originally showed you, showing that you know this new mound is capable of providing data that is just as accurate as laboratory grade force plates. Uh, new data indicates that the new data that we collected showed that ground reaction forces are actually associated with upper extremity joint moments in some cases. And our findings are consistent with what we've um, done in, uh, with previous literature where push off forces really, um, they help generate power, they help propel the pitcher down the mound. But the correlation between ball velocity and uh, the push off power is not as strong as we actually expected it to be. Um, and we've also found that you know uh, you, you do require a decent amount of gluteal activation when you're pushing off. And um, 
if you push off too hard, you might actually inhibit the transfer of energy through the core, making it more difficult for you to pitch. Landing forces, um, as shown by, other, um, by the other papers as well, does seem to have a greater effect on, on performance in, the, uh, in ball velocity. And what's really important is that the instant of that lead foot contact really serves as a transition point in the um, pitch cycle. You're looking at the idea that the pitcher is really transferring a lot of that linear momentum that they have generated as they fall down the mound. Uh, they hit their foot and then that really begins the rotational segment of the pitch where they're transferring, transferring that energy and making it um, usable in, uh, as they rotate to get the, generate the ball velocity. So the new directions of um, baseball biomechanics is really trying to use these new and emerging technologies to get us a better understanding of what's going on. And ground reaction forces play an extremely important role in pitching, especially understanding both velocity and generation as well as the development of stresses in, in the body. But, and it makes sense when you think about it that you know the foundation of the pitch is really uh, how you hit the mound, how you push off and you fall. And in, until recently, we didn't have that ability um, with you know, instrumented uh, pitching mounds or censored pitching mounds, there's now the ability to gain data. So the next phases of the pitch are going to be um, pitching biomechanics and studies that will be able to be performed using these new technologies are really bringing us into a new phase of understanding and it's going to be very exciting to see what happens. Um, so in the interest of time, I think I'm going to call this the end of my talk. So. Uh, thank you again for joining us tonight, and uh, I look. F I hope you enjoy the remainder of the conference. All right. Thank you, Dr. Solomito. Um, before you go, I think we might have a few questions. If you're okay with that. Okay. All right. So um, first one, uh, we'll start. There's just a few. Did you also look at stride lengths related to ground reaction forces? Uh, so this was very preliminary data. We s have started looking at stride length, um, to, but we have yet to correlate it. The first passes were going to be to just kind of look at upper extremity joint moments and ball velocities um, so that we could get an understanding of the accuracy of the mound compared to previously published literature. Um, but yes, there's many, many plans on what to do with this data going forward, um, and that is one of them. So stay tuned. Awesome. Uh, next question. So this may be a question not easily and simply answered, but if a 10% increase in landing force correlates to a one mile per hour increase in ball velocity with no increase in elbow or shoulder joint moments, how does an athlete go about increasing their landing force? And that's a, a million dollar question right there. Um, a lot of this is more than likely going to have to do with the positioning of the knee in the lower extremity, as well as the ability to push off um, but we do need to understand uh, this information um, more, also understand uh, lower extremity muscle activations. Um, there's gonna be a lot that goes into that, but uh, it does seem that the idea of driving down the mound and landing with some kind of force versus just stepping down the mound or falling down the mound may be able to be of some benefit to pitchers. Awesome, and we'll do one more just for the sake of time. Um, it says, did you also examine the relationship of horizontal and vertical impulses and joint kinetics? So we do have the ability to break down um, the ground reaction forces in XYZ components. Uh, the push off and landing forces that I presented here uh, briefly um, were just the uh, combined vectors. Uh, but yes, we can do that and um, run any type of statistical analysis that we would need to do. Um, again, we were able to do this on 23 college pitchers, so this is uh, good preliminary data, and hopefully there will be a lot more to come with larger studies using this mound. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time and for your great presentation.